In a special session overnight, Iowa lawmakers passed one of the nation's most restrictive abortion bans. And a new poll asks Americans where they stand on abortion one year since Roe was overturned. And the federal government's latest target in reducing greenhouse gases, refrigerators and ACs. The rundown starts now. This is Straight Arrow News, bringing you unbiased straight facts. Today is Wednesday, July 12th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. In a special session that went late into last night, the Iowa legislature passed a bill banning abortions as soon as fetal cardiac activity is detected, usually around the six-week mark of a pregnancy. A similar measure to the so-called heartbeat bill was originally passed in the state in 2018, but could not take effect as long as the Roe versus Wade decision stood. After that was overturned, the Iowa Supreme Court blocked it from going into effect last month. This led to Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds calling for the special session. The new bill includes exceptions for rape, incest, and the health of the mother. Governor Reynolds said she will sign the bill into law on Friday. With that, Iowa will become the 15th state to ban most or all abortions since Roe was overturned. Given the fast changing landscape of abortion laws since the Supreme Court's decision, it's become a top issue for Americans and a divisive one at that. But according to the latest Associated Press poll, Americans' views on abortion shift depending on how far along the mother is. Over 70% of respondents said abortion should be legal, at least in the early stages of pregnancy. But after the 24 week mark, the majority of Americans think their state should generally not allow abortions. Overall, only a quarter of respondents said abortion should always be legal. An even smaller percent of Americans think abortion should always be illegal, only one in 10 feeling that way. The poll was conducted in late June, one year after Roe was overturned. North Korea has fired its first intercontinental ballistic missile in three months, just as leaders of South Korea and Japan are meeting on the sidelines of a NATO summit to discuss the growing threat of a nuclear-armed North Korea. North Korea's series of actions, including its repeated ballistic missile launches, threaten the peace and security of Japan's region and the international community and are absolutely unacceptable. Moreover, such ballistic missile launches violate relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions and are a serious security issue for our citizens. The hostility coming from the North has ramped up in recent days, with North Korea accusing U.S. spy planes of violating its airspace zones and threatening to shoot down the American aircraft. North Korea has test-fired its first-ever solid-fuel ICBM, which was one of more than a dozen missile tests the nation has conducted this year. Analysts say the arsenal is powerful enough to put the U.S. in striking distance. A few headlines today regarding the multiple legal battles former President Donald Trump is facing. The DOJ has reversed course on defending Trump in E. Jean Carroll's second suit against the former president. And Trump lawyers are looking for a lengthy delay in his federal case over classified documents. The Justice Department has abandoned its initial plan to defend Trump in a defamation lawsuit brought by E. Jean Carroll. The DOJ argues Trump's presidency no longer shields him from Carroll's suit, given the timeline of events, and says he's no longer entitled to immunity. A spokesman for Trump's presidential campaign called the department's reversal politically motivated. Carroll's second lawsuit against Trump is currently tied up in appeals. Meanwhile, Trump's lawyers are asking a judge to postpone his classified documents trial, possibly until after the 2024 presidential election. They argue Trump's candidacy could make it difficult to seat an impartial jury. Charles Manson follower Leslie Van Houten has been released from a California prison after serving more than 50 years. Van Houten was convicted of the 1969 murders of a wealthy Los Angeles couple at the direction of the cult leader when she was 19 years old. Van Houten is the first Manson follower who took part in the killings to walk free. Van Houten, now 73, was granted parole, and California Governor Gavin Newsom said he would not fight the ruling. He had previously blocked her release in 2020, saying she was still a threat to society. However, the Second District Court of Appeals reversed that decision, saying Van Houten has shown extraordinary rehabilitative efforts, insight, remorse, realistic parole plans, support from family and friends, 
favorable institutional reports, and at the time of the governor's decision, had received four successive grants of parole. Van Houten is expected to spend about one year at a halfway house. She is likely to be on parole for three years. Her attorney says she wants to find a job as soon as possible. The Environmental Protection Agency has announced a new rule that will enforce stricter limits on hydrofluorocarbons. Those are greenhouse gases in refrigerators and air conditioners. The agency will impose a 40% overall reduction in HFCs starting next year. The agency says it's part of a global phase-out effort to slow climate change. The new EPA rule aligns with a 2020 law that calls for an 85% reduction in production of the chemicals by 2036. These are your top stories. Thanks for joining us on The Rundown. We're on a mission to bring back trustworthy journalism by serving only you, not an agenda. Be sure to check out more of our work at straightarrownews.com. And you can also find the latest Rundown episodes available as a podcast on all major podcast platforms. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.